Hello, my name is Lindsey Graham, and I am a cat. Meow, meow. I'm not a woman dressed as a cat. I am a cat. By show of hands, I'm curious, uh, how many of you believe and confess that I'm a cat? Great. I am, by show of hands, I'm curious, how many of you believe that your child or a child from this school would believe that I'm actually a cat? No one. You are right. Truth prevails over imagination. Reality exists. Discernment is innate and something we are biologically wired to have. One look at me and you know this to be true. I am a woman posing as a cat. Yes, it's Lindsey Graham there, otherwise known as Patriot Barbie on Instagram, posing as the cat lady to prove a point to her local school board. She joins us now. Lindsey, thank you so much. Um, tell us where your school board is and whether you think your presentation was effective. Well, the school board that I attended in my cat costume is in Buckeye, Arizona. It's Liberty uh, Elementary School. And there was quite a few people there that were there to protest Paul Bixler's uh, seat on the board dressed as a female. Mm. And unfortunately for us, Paul Bixler did not show up to this board meeting. He zoomed in. I wonder why. Yeah. But I believe that the point was made and I believe that it was powerful. I actually had a member of the school board. Um, I ran into him at the gym the next day and found out that he is indeed a conservative man. And Brian Parks is his name, and he has been fighting against this woke culture and against Paul Bixler and trying to get him to step down for a very long time. So there are people on the board trying very hard to side with parents and get this wokeness out of the school systems. Uh, Lindsay, specifically, you said uh, truth prevails over imagination. So in terms of wokeness in schools, elaborate a little bit there on what you've been seeing. Absolutely. So the idea that a, a man can can put on lipstick and a wig and a dress and call himself a woman and and force small children to identify him as a woman is a complete joke. It's not reality. And even with as imaginative as little children are, and this is in, a, in an elementary school, by the way, as imaginative as they are, children can take one look at a human being and tell biologically naturally their god-given gender and so the idea that the school would reinforce the belief system that a man can put on a dress and force children to identify him as a female when it's very very clear that he's not we're teaching children to be be deceptive we're teaching them that biology isn't real that facts are not existent and that in this make-believe world even their very own teacher Paul Bixler is a woman. I mean, that's just not reality. And if these people want to live in a convoluted uh, fantasy world in their own homes, go for it. It's a free country. Have fun. But the problem is when these people show up in our school systems that we pay taxes for, that we send our children to hoping that they're safe, when we've got this kind of ideology parading around the school and the, the teachers and the school board are in enabling it, we we should be very concerned if that's what's being outwardly taught in the classrooms and being and and being propagated what is being taught in the classrooms that we're not aware of every day yeah talk about the danger you think this does present to to i mean as a parent i, I i've had kids in school they're in college now but you have to stay in touch with what's going on with your kids and i really admire how you you're doing this but explain to people what you think the danger is in allowing this convoluted perception, as you were describing it, to continue, to persist? Well, the danger is already there. We are seeing kids in mass suddenly deciding because it's a trend that they were born into the wrong body, that they were born the wrong gender, and now they are seeking out from adults that they should be able to trust, uh, hormone blockers and therapies and body mutilation, things that no child should be considering. Every single child in America, in the world, should be taught by every loving adult surrounding them that they are perfect exactly as they were created. That if they are a boy who likes pink, that is fine. If they are a girl who loves sports, that is fine. We do not need to put these kids in little gender boxes and tell them that at a young age that God made a mistake. How debilitating is that to a child for the rest of their life? And now, now that kids are starting to take these hormone blockers and change their genders and start to re-identify as something that they truly, truly scientifically and biologically are not, 
the suicide rate one year after transitioning, quote unquote, has skyrocketed. So you cannot tell me that as Biden states in his news conferences that the best thing that we can do for these kids is enable them and give them the help that they need. That's not true. That's a lie. The best thing that we can do for these kids is tell them they are perfect exact, exactly as they are, champion them exactly as they are, and be the kind of adults that raise up little children who are confident in who they are and not tell them that they were born wrong, that they were a mistake, and then, and then mess with their bodies at a young age and destroy them. The danger there is that we're looking at a generation of kids who were given the idea that they were, it was put into their head by people like Paul Bixler who say, hey, you can be whatever you want. And that's not the truth. And then once these kids get that idea in their head and they decide, well, it's really cool to change my gender, I think I'll do that. Mm -hmm. They're destroyed the rest of their life for those decisions. All right, Lindsey Graham, we have to leave it there. Really great having you with us. Thanks so much. Thank you.